Hey, this is Phil Simon for Huffington Post with Mark Kelly, the keyboardist for one of my very favorite bands, Marillion. Mark, how's it going today? Very well, thank you, Phil. Cool. How are you? Good. So let's get the obligatory band update out of the way. Uh, well, there's not too much to tell you. We, we um, Earlier this year, in March and April, we did um, three uh, Marillion weekends, which was one in Montreal, one in Holland, and one in the UK. We do those every two years. Uh, and then after that, we just, we'd already decided we were going to have a, a sort of Marillion break for a few months. Everybody gets a chance to go off and do their own thing, uh, which for Pete Travis, he's in America working with Transatlantic, Steve Hogarth's doing, sorting out some live stuff, I think. Oh, he's mixing some stuff as well. Uh, I'm not sure what Steve Rother is up to. Ian's at home bored because he keeps phoning me up. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm doing some of my, got, got my other hats on, I'm doing some, some um, industry stuff, you know, like a bit of, the lobbying for artist rights and stuff like that. So uh, I've been busy with meetings and stuff whilst trying to get together some music for a solo album, which has been an ongoing thing for about 20 years. So that doesn't mean it's coming out anytime soon. But, you know, it, it's more of a little hobby, really. Right. Um, okay. Speaking of industry lobbying, I've been following your tweets on Pandora. Can you talk a little bit about the different streaming options and which ones are the most artist friendly? Uh, well, yeah, my, my tweets always used to be just weird stuff and jokes and, and then I realised I'm being followed by a lot of people that are industry people and they expect something a bit more serious from me so occasionally I get serious and, and no there was I think it was I was um, I was prompted to tweet that because of um, you know there's, there's a lot of um, misunderstanding about how Pandora works and who, who's getting paid and whether or not it's a good idea and um, you know it's in a very sh small nutshell basically Pandora is a internet radio service which in america means there's compulsory licensing which means they have to pay a certain amount of money it's set by a, a, a different body they don't set yeah. their own prices um to and, and, and that money is split between the the performers and the labels and they're trying to get that amount driven down because they say they, they, they can't make any money at the current prices now a lot of people are wondering about how much money they're getting paid by pandora but they don't get paid anything by US radio because they don't pay. I mean, they pay the writers, but not the players. Um, and because it's a radio service, if you were to compare, you know, the, the number of listeners on it, let's say a thousand listeners on a radio station compared to a thousand listens on Pandora, which is again, it's, it's, it's not, the listeners don't choose what they hear, um, Pandora pays far more, even than UK radio, which does pay. So in that sense, it's a good thing. I hope they continue to to pay and, and that Pandora aren't successful in their lobbying to try and get this amount reduced because I do think eventually they will be profitable. You know, you've got, I think that those services like Pandora and Spotify are the future. I mean, that's, that's the way things are going. I think once, um, once people get used to the idea that their, their music collection isn't going to disappear if they don't own it in their house on their, sh you know, on their bookcase, um, I think um, it's the way, to, it's the best way to listen to music and it's just really about you know, us artists getting paid properly. There's there's a lot of, um, you know, stuff going on behind the scenes where, you know, the record label will get paid and then they, they'll calculate what they pay the artists based on their own contract, which is for physical products with all the deductions that go with that. So, you know, there's there's a there's some updating needed really to record contracts and, um, you know, and a bit more transparency would be good. A lot more transparency would be good, actually, if anybody from a record label is listening, let's talk about this. So, right. um, there you go. Right. Well, we were talking yesterday and uh, you threw out a number on the uh, Pandora subscribers. I actually looked it up. Do you know what they're at right now? Well, I think it's about 70 million regular. 160 million. I, I, they, oh, said wow. they, they said they cracked 200. Okay, but that's 200 people that have subscribed as opposed to 200 people that regularly listen. And that's 200 million. Right. But still, it's a huge number compared to Spotify, which has... I, I looked it up and it said something like 25 million. I spoke to Spotify not, recent, not so long ago and they said they just cleared the 6 million uh, people that are paying for the service. Um, that's worldwide, of course. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's heading in the right direction. But again, Spotify aren't making any money because they're so aggressively trying to expand their business in the hope that they'll get big enough that they can withstand the Apple transition to streaming, which will happen. And right. once Apple get into streaming, they've got something like 80 million or more credit cards on fire. So a lot of people there, they can get get to start paying. And, you know, you know, I think the important message from this is that 
Apple, Spotify, these services are all services that a lot of people pay for, whether it's buying downloads and whatever, and people are willing to do that if the service is great and it's what they want. The whole piracy thing will be less of an issue once, you know, these services get really established. So I, I think it's, it's, you know, the, the music industry sort of, uh, it's, it's hit the bottom and it's, it's starting to move up off the bottom now. Um, so you never know. It's a long way to go to get back to where, where we were 10 years ago in terms of, you know, the amount of money that's been earned by artists. So I'm not talking about rich artists, I'm talking about the amount of artists that have to make a living. Um, but at least it's starting to head in the right direction. Right. Well, you keep making the music and I'll keep listening to it regardless of on what, uh, whatever platform. Well, we've, we've got a great relationship with our fans and, and, you know, we generally tend to cut out the middleman where we can. Um, which means that, that we make a decent living and you know we've got what most artists would like which is longevity we're making a decent living for a, a long period rather than you know having a huge hit and then nothing you know right which was always the story for most most artists so you know 30 31 years now i've been in marillion so it's um yes it's it's good it's nice well here's the 31 more mate mark thanks for your time bud 31 more i can't imagine what that would be like <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Good to talk to you.